right, so welcome to another edition of Chemical of Month videos from Federal Resources Hazmat IQ. This is Todd and I am. That's Milton. <laughs> All right, so here's our call today. We're gonna, we're gonna be dispatched to an event and a little confusion from the dispatcher from the caller. And we're dispatched to first names the same, both, both reports are you're dealing with a chemical, that, that both chemicals being with sulfur, but the dispatcher couldn't tell if the caller said sulfur pentafluoride or sulfur tetrafluoride. Right, right. So is there an attention getter in the name? Yeah, so we're hearing the first name, first name, but the fluoride is, is the yeah, kicker. Yeah, first here. name's important, yeah. but that is the second name. Yeah. So look, we, we, we might be running a real deal here. Absolutely, all right. right? Yeah. So let's, again, let's start where we always start. First name, both of these chemicals begin with the same first name, sulfur. Sulfur, left-hand side of chart two, sulfur. Not there, not there. So Todd, we're going above the line. Sounds like a reasonable choice. Yep. yep, yep. Gas, heavier than air, yes on vapor pressure, toxic of course. P and FID are a yes. Flammability, yes. Corrosive, yes. Fluorine, mm -hmm. I'm betting yeah. yes. Yeah. Yep. Reactive, polymerized, water and air reactive, radioactive, chart three, chart right. three, chart three. All right, so <clears throat> sulfur, sulfur S-U-L-F-U-R. We now, Todd, here's the thing. I can pull fur right. out of the top left box. Right. And here's a, here's a good learning thing, review. Anytime you've got a match, just do a scan to make sure you don't have a better match. And granted, we're familiar with the charts, but Todd, look here. Yeah. In the first name corrosive gas, I've got the entire word sulfur yes. as yes. opposed to just right. a syllable here. Right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go with the entire word sulfur. I'm leaning towards the old red zero corrosive gas. Mm -hmm. All right, so yes. Todd, yeah. like I like to do, I like to see if we can find in the book and let's just figure out whether we are or aren't running the corrosive gas place. Right. So how about look, see if you can find those two chemicals in the book. So I found them on page 291. Both of them on the yes. same page? Yes. Oh, that's, that yeah. makes it easy. It makes it way easier, yep. Yeah. And it's ironic they get these two confused for some reason, right? So we're, we're trying to confirm the DOT guide numbers with the first name and the corrosive gas clue, correct? Correct, absolutely. So sulfur pentafluoride sulfur penta. has no DOT ID number or ERG guide. So penta, no number. Right. So if it's no number, it can't be to 118, 23, 24, 25. Right. D Our day just got better. Yeah, yep, it just, it just uh, hit that number there. All right, so penta is a no. Penta is a no. Okay. For corrosive gas. Now I got guide 125 for tetrafluoride. So one is a no, the other one's a yes. yes. 125 red, yeah. sulfur red, yeah. corrosive gas, specifically acid. Right. So we're going down the street, we don't know which one. I think we gotta play the yeah. game here to play as we gotta start off with a red zero. Yes. Yeah, red yeah. zero. Yeah. So we're going Worst in this thinking, absolutely, yeah. worst yeah. case. Here we go. Corrosive yeah. gas, red zero. Toxic, of course, mm -hmm. I'm reading from the hazards column, toxic, pH blue X, I'm not betting that because sulfur and 125 are red, so, right. you know, right. but that pH blue X is gonna take me to the flammability thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously corrosive. Coming across, I got the red X, goes along here, the yellow X with the fluorine fluoride. Yep. All right, all the X's, temp gun, LEL, PID, everything's a, 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 is, is X'd in with the exception of the FID. Right, right. If we gotta do the rescue thing, <clears throat> turn out gear, and uh, plumbing identify is the old level A. Right. All right? right, so that's where we're at. So Todd, how about this? How about we go through and do the, which one was the corrosive one? Well, tetra? The, the tetra fluoride is a guide 125. Let's debrief that one real quick, so, cause that's worst case, let's see there. Okay. And then we can look at the second one to see if we show up and, and get any more information, okay. all right? Yep. So regardless, or we can go through both of these at the same time, what do you want to do? Let's go through both at the same time. Okay, I think perfect. we can kind of contrast All here. right, so yeah. <clears throat> corrosive gas. I'm betting one of them's a gas. So which one's the gas? Yeah, so sulfur tetrafluoride here says it's physical description, colorless gas with an odor like sulfur dioxide. Okay, Shipped I don't know what that smells like. Gas. It's got an odor of some kind. Yeah. And then sulfur pentafluoride, colorless liquid or gas above 84 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Okay, so liquid giving off quite a few vapors, yeah, or for yeah. above 84, it yeah. is a gas. Bottom line, both of them are giving off, are either gases or giving off a lot of vapors. Right, All right. right. Yep. All right, speaking of vapors, yeah. talk to me about vapor pressure. Yeah, so um, sulfur tetrafluoride, and it's listed at 10.5 atmospheres. So it really wants to be a gas. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's always trying to get back out to its normal state. All right. Uh. Now, sulfur pentafluoride, is has a vapor pressure of 561 millimeters of mercury. That's and again, our point of yeah. reference here is 760, so we're yeah. still up it's there. Bottom close. line is yeah. they're both giving off a lot of vapors. It's pumping out some vapors. All yep. right. Yep. All right, how about heavier than air? The pentafluoride is eight times heavier than air. Wow. 8.77. And the R gas D for tetrafluoride is 3.78. All right, so vo both of them are heavier than air. Yep. All yep. right, let's do toxicity. Sulfur pentafluoride has an ideal H of 1 ppm, and its NIOSH REL ceiling is 0 0.01 ppm. So that's the lowest concentration that anybody can be exposed to without respiratory protection. Okay, so one yeah. part per million ideal H. Wow, yeah, that's, yeah, it's that's very a low, low number, high yeah. toxicity yes, value. Yes. What's the other one? The so sulfur tetrafluoride. And again, that's the 125 that's the, one. This that is the one. corrosive gas, not determined. Huh, seems strange, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah, and it has a ceiling of 0.1 parts per million, so which is, you know, hundreds of a ppm more than a <clears throat> pentafluoride. So toxicity wise, they're leads. both pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Here it's low, yeah. low levels regardless of which yes. one. Yes. All right, Todd, will the PID see it? Either one? The PID, um, the IP for pentafluoride is question mark. So it means it has an IP, we just don't think a 10.6 lamp will see it. May or may not. But if it doesn't, don't don't be expect don't be worried about it. If it okay. does, don't freak out either, right? All right. And the IP for tetrafluoride is 12.63. It's not seeing that one. It's not going to see that one. So if we get a PID reading, it's, we can tell it's the, it might be. We well, could probably rule this one out. This one out. Yeah. Right. And if we yeah. don't get a PID reading, we can't rule either one of them out. Right. Because of exactly. the question mark. Exactly. How about the FID? The FID only, remember, it's these carbon and hydrogen bonds. This has no carbon or hydrogen, either one of them. Matter of fact, the pentafluoride is S2F10. The sulfur tetrafluoride is SF4. So there's no no C or H. No C's and H's. All right. How about flammability? We got that issue. There's a, a NA for L for right, Neither one for flammability. Neither one. So flashpoint from, NA. From a, that just tells me that since we are thinking the corrosive thing, the flammability went away. We got to go in here and do the deal. Right. That's that's the level A suit. That's yeah. when you wear level C. Yeah, Corrosivity with is, no flammability. Yeah, this is, the perfect call for it. All right, so corrosive. Now, we already talked about the one of them has the 125 guide number. Yep. So that answers that one. Yep. The other one, do we got any synonyms, trade names that take us down to help to answer the corrosivity question? Not really, because the synonyms, trade names here are, are, are disulfur decafluoride or sulfur decafluoride. So there's really no clue in, into Both its synonyms corrosive. have fluoride yeah. in it, though. All right, how about reactive? Polymerized specifically. Yeah, so again, there's no carbon to hydrogen double bonds. There's no DOT ID number listed here at all for pentafluoride. For tetrafluoride, there's no P listed to the guide number. There's nothing down here that talks about polymerization. So, so polymerization issue went away. Flammability, we shouldn't have anything. Yep. Again, about, pushing us to that level A type call. How about water air reactivity? So pentafluoride under incompatibilities and reactivities, none reported. Incompatib incompatibilities and reactivities for tetrafluoride. Uh, let's see, moisture, concentrated sulfuric acid, dihydrogen fluoride. Note, readily hydrolyzed by moisture, forming hydrofluoric acid Whoa. and thionyl fluoride. Whoa. Yeah. So there's our clues and, right and here. That's, that, that's the 125 corrosive gas, yes, right? Yes, yes. So that's leading me to say we, we, we could certainly get a change on the F paper there. Yeah, so this, this is our potential bad actor right here. All right, what about the solubility stuff? So when you, when you look here readily hydrolyzed by moisture, you, you got to look at solubility. So the solubility for this says reacts. So reacts indicates to you that this stuff hits water or moisture and air, and it reacts and forms something else. That's one of the good things about this book, Milton, is that 
th this book will actually give you information that if it makes something, mixes Happen. with water, it makes something else that's hazardous, it'll tell you what it is. How about the other one, solubility? Solubility, insoluble, and none reported for incompatibilities and reactivities. Okay. Radioactive? Well, there's no guide number for this one, so. No. Yeah, I'd say no. Tetrafluoride, 125, that's not 161 through 166. It's not 112, 113, 114 for explosives. So, we're, so Todd, how are we going to know which one we got? Well, we're going to have to let the meters do some answering for us. So how are we getting dressed? So uh, my initial response, if we can trust and verify that these, it's one of these two, I say we enter in for recon on this one. If there's no lives to be saved or rescues to be made, and if they have, hopefully they've already been done, but we're gonna enter this in a um, level A with SCBAs. And if we go in and the pH and the F paper on the suit back here on the outside changes color, that obviously pH tells us the S on the corrosivity. Right. If we've got the F paper change, then that, that, that tells us that, that takes us there. If yeah. it doesn't change, we could say we lean the other way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you get dressed the same. The hazards that are there are relatively the same. The hazards that are not there are relatively the same. Flammability, yep. polymerization, right. radiation, all that. They're both toxic at the same amount. Right. Bottom line is the a couple, the couple cent piece of paper tells us right. which one we're dealing with. Act, react according. Isn't that crazy? Let's add a little twist. Let's add Cause, it. Because uh, there may be, you know, we talk a lot about this in our training classes about hydro fluoride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrofluoric acid. And we, we've been teaching for years that, you know, between a one and a 5% body surface contact is okay. a, considered lethal to a human. And just a point of reference, that's the old palm of your palm hand, your hand whatever. right? And so we've often said that the yellow F paper upon entry for rescue or recon and bunker gear SCBA is an abort mission call. In fire gear, in fire gear, level B or level C. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the, what we what we don't want to get tripped up on is on names, right? That's one of the things that Hazmat IQ and Above Line Blow Line has been teaching for many years is that we're not going to let the names trip us up, but we're going to let hazards identify. The name can be an attention getter yes. and pay it. Yeah, pay but, attention. But we're not going to freak out on right, this stuff, right? right? So let, let's put this into a scenario where. We've got one or two of these chemicals in this warehouse, and there's a, a downed person, and we need to make a rescue. Okay. It's a line of sight. Okay. So they've pulled up outside the, you know, the bay doors here, and they can see, look in here, there's a couple of cylinders and containers. Right. And there's a person laying within 50 feet of their doorway. Right. And all they have is right F here. paper, Cylinder paper. leaking. Right. They got their stay alive five meters, and they're going to make entry into here. Now, and as a hazmat team, that's one. If they got the meters, that's one to tell them. Yeah, it's a go. Yeah, yeah go. Deploy your equipment. Stay alive. Five. Yeah. So if they make entry into this environment, and let's say the pH does change. Okay. And even for this volatile liquid, let's say maybe it is acid. They just don't, don't identify it. The there. top one there. Yeah. So let's say the pH changes, but the F doesn't change, and they make the grab even in this fluorinated material. You know, this is the one thing about the science. I can't tell you why fluorine gets kicked out of some of these things, why it's a bad actor, why, why the parents kick it out of the home. I got no idea. Only I can tell you is that sometimes it gets it out, sometimes it doesn't. And what tells that, me it does or doesn't is that five paper. cent piece of exactly paper. Exactly right, exactly right. So, and how do we know this? Because well, we've tested it. We have tested these papers. We've seen it change. We know that it works. And we could, uh, w with all good consciences, sit here and tell you that we trust this paper, we know it works, put it on your masks, make entry. If it changes, or you think it changes, hey, get out. And the same crew going in, the paper changes, the pH paper changes red, and the F paper changes yellow. Right. That, that's your boogie. answer there. Time to boogie, right, yep. exactly right. And maybe another crew's got to try to come in from another point of view or point of area yeah. or whatever, yeah. and maybe, yeah. maybe, you know, that's hazmat team, it's, yeah. it's game on here. Let's yeah. get dressed Sometimes, and do it. Yeah. And then, exactly right. So meters tell you what's up. Exactly right. All right. So I think that wraps up uh, this, this month's edition of Chemical of the Month. We appreciate you uh, paying attention and coming along with us, and uh, we encourage you to get the books out 
uh, study this information, go through the charts, um, email us with any uh, interesting runs or calls you've been on. We'll be happy to do your chemical of the month next time.